Hey, welcome to Easy Exposure. As I promised you, I'm gonna do the lesson today about resizing your images for the web in Photoshop. And there is two types of resizing you can do to your image. Uh, the first one, when you resize the actual physical size of the image, uh, which is used for resizing images for printing. The other type, the one we are going to talk about today, is resizing the pixels of the image, which called actually resampling, not resizing the image, but resampling the image. So we're going to talk about this one today, because this one is the one which is used for resizing images for web. So let's get started. Here on my desktop I have a folder with some pictures from Hawaii, and those are in resized JPEGs. So let's try to resize or so-called resample one of the images because we are going to actually change the pixel dimension so we can use them on the web. Let's open one of them in Photoshop. And to resize this image, we go to Image and Image Size. And let's take a closer look at this window. And as you can see here, we have two types of image dimensions. One of them is the pixels dimensions and this is the ones which we gonna change because we wanna have less pixels, the image was less pixels in width and the height so we can post it to the website. The second one is actual document size and these dimensions are used for printing because this is actual size of the picture which can be print. We are not gonna touch them today because we care about the resizing the image for the web, not for printing. So let's take a look at these checkboxes. And first one is the scale styles. Uh, you should check this box if you have some layers in the image which have styles on them. For example, you add the shadow to the layer. If you don't have any layers with styles in your image, you can leave this box checked or unchecked, it doesn't really matter. Because if you have the layers with the styles, if you have this box unchecked, the styles won't scale together with the image. If you have it checked, the styles will scale together with the image. But if you don't have any, it doesn't matter if it's checked or unchecked. The next box is contain proportions box. You want to have it checked because you want to contain your proportions. You want, if you change your width, you want height to change together with it. So have this box checked. And the third box is resample the image. Since we are changing the pixels dimensions of the image, we want this box checked because resampling means changing a pixel dimension of the image and resizing means changing the actual size of the document. So we want to change the pixels, so have resample image box checked. Because if we have it unchecked, see, this is not going to change. We, we don't even have option to change it. But if we have it checked, we can change those. Also, um, a method of resampling you should choose. Uh, usually I use the cubic method, which is best for smooth gradient. But you can also use, if you want to make an image smaller, you, you can use cubic sharper, which is the best for reduction, as the developers of Photoshop state. And this one, while you are making the image smaller, will also add some sharpening. You can try both of them, but I prefer the just the cubic method because I like to do my sharpening by myself afterwards. So let's choose cubic method for now. First of all, you will have to change the resolution. 
and 300 resolution is good for printing. For web, resolution of 72 is enough. And as you can see, when we change the resolution, our pixels dimensions, our width and height also changed. And also the overall um, pixels of the image also changed. We had, it drastically changed. What a difference. We had 46 megapixels. Now we have just 2.65 megapixels. Also, if you if width and height didn't change uh, quite enough, you can change it here too, to the size you wish. And uh, for our forum, I think width of 800 is enough. And when we change the width, our height will change automatically because we have contain proportions box checked as well. So we did everything, we changed our resolution to 72 and we changed our width after changing resolution to 800. And now we're ready to press OK. And see our image got smaller, let's get it to a full size. This is our image in 100%, that's how big it's gonna be. Also, if you feel like image is not sharp enough you can add some sharpening and I usually use filter sharpen and then sharpen mask and the amount will control the amount of sharpening the bigger the amount the more sharp image gonna be but you don't want to go so extreme you just try to slide the slider back and forth and see which works better. Probably for this image, about 80 is enough. Also, the radius, the bigger the image, the bigger the radius, the smaller the image, the smaller the radius you want to use. And see when I increase the radius what happens. So this is a small image, so probably around 0 0.8 pixels should be enough. Also, threshold is responsible how many details you're gonna get. Um, the maximum details you get with a zero threshold, and when you increase your threshold, the less details you get, you see your image gets a little bit more blurry. So in most cases, I use the threshold of zero. Sometimes for portraits, you might wanna increase your um, threshold to get the smoother skin but usually I use the zero threshold. But I will talk about sharpening in more details in some other video. Here I just wanna show you real quick how to sharpen the small images after resizing them. You can play with those sliders and see what you get, but you wanna be somewhere around these settings. And click OK. And you can also see before and after. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can always preview and check this button see what you had after and what you got before and click OK and of course don't forget to save your image and to save your image go to file and save as and you will have to choose your destination folder who needs Hawaii but uh, my advice to you would be if you are saving it in the same folder where your original is renamed your image because if you don't rename it it might override your original or save your file in the new folder also choose the format as jpeg and click save and here is another window where we have an option to set the quality at the maximum quality your size of the image will be also maximum if you lower your quality the size of the image will get smaller too and you can play with the slider back and forth and see how your image is changing to be honest you don't have to set your quality to maximum because your file size will be maximum too usually you don't really see the difference between 10 and 9 or even 8 for example so it's better to set it to a lower number and you can see if the quality of your image is acceptable.
so just set it to the lowest number possible and click OK. This is how you resize a single image. But what if you want to resize a lot of images at the same time? This is also possible. So let me show you how to do it. Let me show you how to resize all the pictures at the same time. We will be working with the pictures which are in our Hawaii folder. To prevent from resizing your original files by mistake, you might want to duplicate your folder with the pictures. And we will call this new folder Originals. We will be resizing pictures from this folder. You also want to create the empty folder which I will call resized because all resized photos will go into this folder. Let's choose one photo from our original folder and let's resize it. Let's open it on Photoshop. And to resize all our other pictures, we will be recording an action. You will understand what the action is as we go. To record the action, you have to make sure that your action window is open. If it's not open, go to Window and check Actions. And the Actions window will appear. As you can see, we have some default actions here already pre-made and which is the vignetting, sepia toning and some others. We're not going to touch those. We will create our own action set and our own action. So let's create our action set by clicking the folder icon right here. And our action set we will name Resize. All the actions connected to resizing images will go into this folder and click OK and you see this folder will, will appear here. And now let's create the action itself which will go into this folder and to create the action itself you click on the icon which looks kind of like a square piece of paper with bent corner right here. And we will call this action Resize. 800 because we will be resizing our images to 800 pixels in width and now we can click record and from this moment we will be recording our action as you can see the red dot right here lit up and it means that we are recording our action so everything what we are gonna do with this image will be recorded right here so first let's resize our image. As I already showed you, you have to go to image, image size, make sure that contain proportions in the resample image is checked and choose the method of resampling. I choose cubic. First we will change the resolution to 72, which is appropriate for the web. And then we change our width to 800 and we click OK. And you will see that image size showed up here in action. So the re image resizing has been recorded into the action. Let's get our image to 100% size so that we can see it better. Also, you can add some sharpening by going to filter, sharpen, and then sharpen mask. But you have to be careful with this because the same sharpening will be applied to all your images in the bunch and for some images you might not need so much sharpening for others you need more so sometimes it's better to do the sharpening for every image separately but if you do a sh sharpening for all the images at the same time it can also save you some time so let's not add too much sharpening to the image let's just add 50% of sharpening and click OK and you see that unsharpened mask has been recorded in the action. The third step we have to do, we have to save this image. 
and to save the image we go to file save as and we can save this image wherever we want to let's save it in our resized images folder and we can name it small and click on save and I set my quality to 8 and click OK and the save image also recorded in the action so we have three steps recorded in our resize 800 action which is image size on sharpen mask and save so now we have to stop recording our action by clicking the stop square and you can see a red dot is not leading up anymore so from this point we are not recording our action anymore we already recorded it right here now we need to re apply this action to the rest of the images and to apply this action to the rest of the images you have to go to file automate and batch let's take a bit closer look at this window and here we have to uh, choose our set set of actions the one we just created which called resize and also the action which was resize 800 so this action will be applied to all the images also we need to set our source folder and have, you have choice here choose the word folder and we will choose the folder from which we want to resize our images so we want to resize all the images which are in our originals folder so we choose this folder also don't forget to check suppress file open options dialogs and suppress color profile warnings and then choose your destination all the result all the resized pictures will go in that destination folder so we choose folder and then our destination folder is the empty folder we created which we called resized and choose this folder also check Override action save as command and also you can give the name to your files But it's up to you. You have some options right here how to name your file I just named the file by the document name plus resized Starting serial number you can set to one and arrow stop for errors So and then we're ready to click ok as soon as we click OK, all of our pictures start to resize. All three actions, image resize, unsharpen mask and say will be applied to all those images. And here we go. And see our resized images are in our resized folder. I can't really tell you exactly how many images you can resize at a time because it depends how large the images are or how strong your computer is. So don't try to resize uh, tons of images at the same time just resize a few images and see how your computer can handle that i hope you could follow along but if you miss some steps i will post also them in writing on my blog and the link uh, is below in description and please from now on resize all your images before posting them to web there is a lot of good reasons for that first of all the download is faster the uh, when you open the web page they are loading faster also when you post them for example to Facebook and Facebook uh, resizes your images uh, the quality will be worse than if you post already resized image also you don't want your images to float around the web and anybody can use them because you posted them in full resolution in full size.
And also, please, please, please resize your images before posting them to our forum. So our forum loads faster. And for those of you who didn't uh, sign up for our forum, please go to www.easy-exposure.com and join our community. And I see you next time. Bye-bye.